Monday morning, the 9th of October 2017, with the sun rising over a lazy and misty Val River, South Africa was getting geared up for the 13th annual Black Bass Fishing World Championships. Just before lunch, it was time to do the last few preparations and await the arrival of our international guests. There was also time for a quick couple of photos with some South African anglers. Then it was time for a quick meeting with Saba President Craig Fraser, running through some rules and guidelines for our local skippers. And here we are kicking off the 13th World Black Bass Championships. We're super excited to get this event underway. And as you can see over my shoulder, we have the USA team signing all the memorabilia, as well as Zimbabwe, we have Russia, and the rest of the delegations that are here. So all the anglers are registered, all the anglers are ready to rock and roll, and we're ready to kickstart this event off. Okay, so here we are with our uh, first team to arrive, Team USA. Firstly, welcome to South Africa. It's great to have you guys here. It's really elevated our World Championships a lot, just having Team USA, so welcome. Uh, how's it been so far getting in here? Oh, it's been good. I just love the different terrain that we're looking at. It's Everybody's been welcoming. It's been a fun trip so far. And uh, a long travel, a, a long flight to get here. How excited are you to go fishing? Oh man, I'm so excited to get out on the water. You know, it was a long flight, long day yesterday. Uh, got rested up, you know, felt pretty good today. So we're really looking forward to tomorrow, get a little bit more rest tonight and we'll be back. We'll be in the groove by tomorrow for sure. And if I am correct, all three of you are Mercury pros and we're standing here at one of our premium sponsors, which is Mercury. And we're taking a look at the 400 horsepower on our on a Mercury uh, locally built boat, the Renegade. Uh, what do you think about that? That's a sharp looking ride. I'm looking at this 400 racing motor. Now, we, we know about this motor, but we're not allowed to go over 250 horses. So I uh, hope I get to drive this boat tomorrow. That's I'm excited about that I'm opportunity. <laughs> Before sunrise, while it was still dark, this tournament already saw some of our local skippers on the water to start prepping for the day's action. So we're here, first morning of the practice day with one of the skippers, a well-known South African angler and a protea angler, Charles Engelbrecht. Charles, tell me, what does it mean to be a skipper at an event like this? It's an honor to have everyone from, you know, all around the world here fishing. This is definitely, you know, if not the biggest tournament, one of the biggest tournaments that uh, is happening in the world. Um, with 13 countries competing, yeah, it's, it's an amazing show of everyone's class and, you know, we're hoping that the best team comes out. Um, it's an honor to, to show for guests around. Um, you know, we, we're always in that stage where, you know, we're wishing we were fishing. So, yeah, it's great to be here. And of course, on hand with a portable tackle shop, or should we say more of a container of a tackle shop, was the boys from Solly's Angler's Corner. Uncompromising. Like the fishermen who swear by it. A lot of the international anglers didn't even know what to expect from the conditions on the Vol, and some of them had actually never fished these shores before. It was very difficult for some of them to hold back their enthusiasm, as we can even see from South African team manager Mike Milligan.
Here we are at the very top of the Vaal River. As you can see behind me is what we call the weir. That's the furthest point that you can travel up on the Vaal River. I'm close by the Latabo power station here, supplying power off into the relevant uh, areas. But the important thing to note of this river is there's just so much structure. There's so many different types of structure on this river and it's going to be interesting to see what type of structures are going to be the key ones throughout the week. Joined by Mike Mati and Wayne Lowe, both Saba members. Uh, you guys fished on the FLW circuit here a few months back and uh, you were the champions, you won the event and you're off to the States, correct? Correct. It was a good one, eh? We caught some good fish, had some uh, key bites, which I think were the main thing, and, um, but it was a bit of a grind. And tell me about that transition from, from a junior. I know that we have a great program in the Saba events whereby we put a lot of emphasis into our junior programs and really building those juniors up into the senior, senior events. Did that help you to get to where you are now? Most definitely made me very competitive. Putting two guys on a boat, competing for water, making your own decisions, it seriously sets you up in the right position to get ready as a senior. was time to get the official proceedings underway with teams wearing their official colors and for an official welcome by organizers and international FIPSET president Claudio. After each country had placed their flag in place and followed by their national anthem, it was time to officially declare the tournament now open. On behalf of the International Freshwater Federation, I declare open third Black Bass World Championship and the best win. Thank you. With the Swaziland team manager, they've taken a long drive to be here. Uh, tell me, how was the trip down? The uh, trip down was eventful. We, we lost a wheel just out of workies, but uh, got that sorted. And then uh, hit the trouble here in Mayerton, like we all know, but we are safely. And uh, yeah, looking forward to the week. We're standing on peg number five with the Mexican team, and I'm joined with Zuan and, uh, and Yoshi. They are from the Mexican team. How have you guys enjoyed the event so far? Great. People have treated us very well. It's very well organized. We really feel so fun, safe, and kind of nervous for starting. Practice day got off to a flying start with anglers soon out on the water to try and figure out exactly what our local bass population would want to snack on and how to get them to bite. After each day, anglers, staff and tournament organizers spent time together at the Ubuntu Buffet restaurant 
for a hearty meal prepared by skilled chefs and shared a joke or two. Day one of the tournament saw clear skies and a light breeze while skippers and anglers made last minute adjustments to their plans and strategy for the start of the three day tournament. I'm with uh, Mr. Scott Martin here, probably one of the most well known anglers in the world and we have him right here in South Africa on our shores and we're very thankful to have you here. I'd say it's been, uh, it's been awesome, the hospitality here has been great. Uh, just everybody's been so nice and helpful. It's the first time I've been to South Africa. I'll tell you, I'm really impressed. You know, the river's beautiful. Uh, there's a lot of fish in this river. And as we can see, the event started attracting a huge amount of spectators. Once the South African anthem was played, it was time to get the competitors underway. Without hesitation, the skippers and anglers shot out of the hole and try to get to those hot spots as soon as possible. Thankfully, the sun broke through later during the day, making fishing conditions way more bearable and even more manageable for anglers. And hopefully this would prove to bring on the all-important bite. Day one saw a lot of activity on the water and a lot of fish being caught, but now it was time to make up those all-important points in this Grand Prix system. Too soon, the time on the water came to a sad end and it was time for the weigh-in as boats were being pulled up to the stage with anglers presenting their catches to an already waiting weighmaster and an international adjudicating team. I think it went well on the conditions. We had a pretty rough start this morning. The fish seem to act a lot alike and uh, the habitat looks the same, everything looks the same. So. Yeah, this would, this would fit right in back in, in the States. Talk to me, my friend. How was the day? Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Um, started off a bit slow, caught lots of fish, um, but just no quality fish. Um, disappointing from that side of things, but, you know, we stuck to our game plan. A lot of the, the areas that we wanted to fish obviously were occupied, um, but that's part of the game. So we just started uh, making some alternative, uh, alternative plans and uh, filtered around the river, so slowly, slowly uh, built up the bag, but sure, tomorrow's another day, so. But I want to say it's so, so beautiful to be here with all you guys from all over the world, and it's a great honor for us to start for, for Germany, and um, we didn't find the big ones, but we had great fun today. It was good. Um, started off a little bit hectic for us. Uh, you know, obviously you put a plan together and you try and run a few areas, but uh, yeah, it, it never works out like that. So we had to change game plan completely today. This, one of the toughest days on the water due to unstable weather, would put the skills of each and every single angler to their utmost test.
Good morning and welcome back to day two of the 13th Black Bass World Championship. A great day yesterday, some decent bags coming in, but definitely, definitely a, a different weather pattern that's pulled in here this morning. Much, much better visibility. Uh, a little bit of mist this morning, but uh, very, very thankful to not have that rain here. And I'm very happy to have a, a good friend of ours down from the Western Cape. He is the creator and originator of waymasters.net. You've heard me say those words many, many times. Johan, thank you for taking the time to come and talk to us. Basically, within the first two months after I joined bass fishing again, um, in the bass fishing fraternity after taking a break, there was a Region 5 on uh, here in Southern Africa. And I was very, very keen to see what our team were doing there. And, and they, they were doing very, very well, but there was no ways that we could see what they were doing. And, and as, as a passionate angler, I thought we need to do something about this. And having the right environment in my business where we could develop software, I decided that maybe it's time to put something back into the sport um, where we can actually share the results, share the information, and be with our teams where they are, wherever they're fishing, with the individual anglers, with our loved ones, fathers, dads, sons, daughters, uh, wherever they were fishing, that we could, you know, we could follow them. And, uh, and it just became an absolute passion to to do Waymaster so that we could share information with our loved ones at home. were soon racing in different directions along the entire length of the Vol River and anglers were working hard pitching and casting for that all-important big bite and hopefully an even bigger fish. During this day's weigh-in, there was way more time to be able to actually have a quick chat with some of the important anglers. Uh, the fishing's pretty good here. I mean, uh, we're not really in a true test with the weather we had today, but uh, but it's uh, you know it's fun. I, we probably caught 40 or 50 today, so it's uh, this is one of those things where getting a good one was a challenge. Weigh-in. As far as I, our, 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 my team is concerned, we had a bit sort of tough day. We caught plenty, but we lacked quantity. But yeah, tomorrow is a new day, so we'll try to bump our weights tomorrow. It's the first time here in South Africa. It is amazing. Good day, hard condition, but uh, the river is very good. Olá Portugal, boa tarde a todos. Yeah, it seems like 90% of the fish are using about 10% of the water. First time here, yeah, and it was really, it's been really good. I've... Yeah, for sure, the support has been fantastic. Uh, all you guys that have come, come to see us, thank you very much. All the messages on Facebook, WhatsApp, uh, see the family there. It's uh, very, very special. It's a lot of fun. Uh, there's so many people that love bass fishing here in South Africa. Really amazed. Yes, uh, yeah, we, we were trolling a bit uh, earlier on and uh, we just mixed it up a bit and uh, luckily we, we got into a spot and uh, we had two nice fish there. And, uh, a little bit of a better day than yesterday. Um, yeah, look, it was tough. Eh? You know, this morning we started off and uh, yeah, I must say we, we were battling a lot and we, we kind of went practicing today again and try to get some new areas because it's, it's just getting harder and harder as we're going through, through the time.
After a quick cup of coffee and of course the all welcoming speech and captain's meeting in the morning, it was time for a quick handshake, a quick chatting of strategies and of course time to make those last minute plans to face the final day of this three day tournament on the Vol. Pretty soon it was off to the water again and time for the guys to get out of the hole, get out of the gate and get to that hot spot to try and make up those points which would stand between silver and gold. And I've just grabbed Mr. Craig Fraser here as he finished his captain's meeting or his skipper's meeting this morning. Craig, I'm going to start off, as you always say, putting on a different hat. Take the Saba hat off. Let's put on the ITS hat. ITS Computers, uh, very top tier sponsors for this event, uh, very much involved. I know I got uh, Dell laptops sponsored for our crew, as well as you flew in that uh, awesome Wi-Fi router. Um, from ITS, uh, ITS's perspective, um, Hey, I'm a bass fisherman, I love the sport, and I believe in brand awareness. Once again, on day three, as in the previous two days, teamwork was of paramount importance to make sure that that all-important fish was safely landed and gotten onto the boat. Impeccable teamwork, and once again here demonstrated by the South African team in the likes of Justy Farkefus and Ruan Vol, where one angler tightens up on the fish and the other one makes absolutely sure that the net is ready to get that fish on board because now the points do count. As we headed towards the final weigh-in on day three and a... Spectators started arriving rather early and Mark Bywater once again used this opportunity to do some giveaways and hand out some goodies with the compliments of our various sponsors. Sadly for anglers and spectators gathered, this all came down to this final weigh-in on the final day of the tournament. With a huge growing crowd of spectators, it was time to see who got those all-important big bites on day three. After three days of grueling fishing, hunting for bites and casting with tired arms and broken bodies, it all came down to a final chat, a quick interview and a couple of autographs and of course time to tally the scores. Tell us a little bit about your team tactics leading up to this event. Uh, but it's been exceptional. I think, um, you know, I think as far as this team thing is concerned, we've got to believe in, in our strategy our tactics and we've stuck with it uh, right until the last day. Uh, Mark, this one was I think a lot more stressful, you know, when you travel overseas all that way, you're not really expected to win. 
I think we've kind of been expected to win here and the pressure's been on the guys. I think they've produced. Um, our boys behind us have got some nice fish, so I think we might have this in the bag. Absolutely fantastic. Tell us, how was the fishing? Very hard. Very difficult. And the experience of coming to South Africa, have you enjoyed it? Very good experience. Picked and selected to be part of this elite group is a, a special honor. And I want to say a special thanks to the, the people here in South Africa. I've never went somewhere where people are always like, hey, welcome to South Africa. Welcome here. Welcome here. You guys are very, very welcoming here, which makes me want to come back. That's fishing. Catch a lot of fish. Yesterday, the big ones today, they were a little bit too small. Ah, it's been awesome. The plan was put together and uh, it, today was the day that we needed to get it right and, I, and I, I'm hoping we've got it right. So. Do you guys think you have enough to win this event? Yeah, I think we do. Uh, I hope so. Um, to lose it from here would be devastating. say congratulations to Italy in their third place but it's the time it's the moment to crown the champions of the 13th World Black Bass Championships 2017 right here in South Africa the local favorites South Africa South Africa Final prize giving, each team came to the stage to receive a trophy and a massive congratulations from the organizers for taking part in this, the 13th annual Black Bass Fishing World Championships. Coming from different parts of the globe and traveling for thousands of miles to come and put their skills against each other, we just want to take a moment to say a big thank you. Italy, Germany, the USA, South Africa, Zambia, Namibia, Swaziland, Russia, Spain, Croatia, Zimbabwe, and of course, last but not least, the Mexicans. Sadly, it was time for Fipset International President Claudio to officially close out the tournament. On behalf of the International Freshwater Federation, I declare close this World Championship and I wait you, all of you, next year in Mexico. Grazie.